In this vid, I'm going to be showing a lot of the cool stuff that I picked up at Nationals this year. Um, the only thing that I will not be showing in this video is the t-shirt that you get when you uh, pre-register the day before National starts. And the only reason I'm not showing them is because they are in the laundry. So um, I'll probably be taking a video sometime in the future, uh, hopefully near future, where I show my face and I'll try and wear the shirt so that people can see it. But um, if you're interested in seeing it, it's pretty common. You can easily Google it. Um, so I'm going to show some of the other things that are uh, a little bit different. Um, oh, I can show the card that you get for registering the day before nationals or I guess technically it is the first day of nationals but it's the pre-registration day so this is the polytoad so this year uh, if you went to oh is it they gave out poly what's the on uh, there's polytoad polywirl poly what polywag polywag whatever whatever it is um, but they gave them out of various tournaments so this is the final line with polytoad um, really really cool league promo and the only way you can get it is by registering in nationals so that'll be going into my collection I do have one spare um, I honestly don't know if I'm, I'm interested in giving it up right now um, but um, yeah I, I do have a spare so um, really I would need really good offers for it though uh, let's see. So other cool stuff that I get. The only thing I um, I bought at Nationals, other than um, some cards that I um, I bought from uh, from a random kid, um, was this deck box. So at uh, Nationals they had Collector's Cash and Troll and Toad uh, as vendors, and while they had a ton of cool stuff, this was the only one that I ended up buying. So my deck, which um, actually I haven't shown my deck yet, um, I need to do that in this vid. Uh, the deck that I ran for Nationals was, um, initially it actually started off revolving around the Chinchilla. Um, this is the Minchino, um, obviously the big Pokemon that I like is uh, Chinchino, but um, yeah, um, this is kind of a bit of a girly deck box, but um, I really like the Chinchilla, so got those on the front, Muna and Purloin on the side, and I don't even know what the patillil and something. Um, so pretty cool. It also comes with two dividers that have the images of the sides or of the Pokemon on the sides. And then, which is pretty cool, right where the Velcro is, you have, or you can see in the background, a Pokeball. Um, so I'll go through my deck in a minute. I did make a slight change for a, a modified tournament after. Uh, the main tournament, but I'll go through what the the original deck was. And uh, next, I uh, will let's see. I've got so much stuff to show. Um, let's go by showing some uh, some of the random things I picked up throughout the day. One of the side events allowed you to play random games against really whoever you wanted. And then you stood in this line, it was actually a pretty long line, and when you got to the end, or I guess the front of the line, you handed a person, the person um, your number, and then your opponent also handed them their number, you said who won, and you were given uh, two random cards. And uh, they don't let you keep those cards, but the cards would have a prize on them the winner of the match would get to choose um, which prize they wanted. So typically they were things like, um, well, random cards, you know, the hollows, reverses, sometimes you just got commons and uncommons. Um, but there was also a lot of other cool stuff like bags, mats, um, booster packs. Unfortunately I didn't win any of the big stuff. I think the, the most that I ever really came out with were booster packs. Um, but I did get quite a few cards, which I'll be showing the cards later. But I did hang on to my numbers. Um, well, this is not my number. Um, this is my boyfriend's number. Um, I just figured I'd keep a hold of both of them. Um, mine's a little more beat up because it was in my back pocket the whole tournament um, for th two days, three days. Um, some other cool things that I got. Um, I got these three die. These are Professor... Um, well, I don't know if they're Professor, but they are... Um, Let's see if my camera will focus in on them. Maybe it's not. Um, 
But it says Hawaii 2010. These die were the um, the only way you can get them were by going to uh, Pokemon 2010 Worlds, which was held in Hawaii last year. I met this really cool guy who is um um well he's a professor judge. He's pretty much he's been he knows everything about Pokemon. Has been playing the game for years, um, and uh, was giving away some uh, some free dice. So. Um, got a few of those, which is really cool. Um, I also got this. Well, actually, my boyfriend gave this to me. Um, but he picked it up from his first round opponent, who I believe is the father of the junior champion. I saw him walking with the junior champion, um, after Top Cut. And, um, I forget what the game is called, but there's a game in Japanese that uses these poker chips. Um, I mean, they're essentially, they're poker chips with the, um, I'll put the Pokemon on front. Um, so my boyfriend picked this one up for me. This is uh, obviously the Blastoise poker chip, um, and this is as uh, Blastoise is one of my favorite Pokemon. So um, yeah, I thought this is really cool, um, something from Japan, and this will this is gonna be something I'm gonna hang on to for a while. So I do typically trade away most of my Pokemon items that are not cards, but um, that's an exception. I will definitely be hanging on to that. Um, oh, I want a random Call of Legends deck box in uh, one of those league games. Um, they're passing out stickers <laughs> at some point, so I got stickers. Unfortunately, I put them in my book bag and they kind of got crushed. Um, so I don't really know what I'm going to do with the stickers. Or if anyone wants them, I can I can always send them along as maybe extras in a trade or something like that. Um, so there's some more stickers there. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is a cool one. Um, so the people from my Raleigh uh, area, they uh, went as the group as the Brother Ladies from uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. If you've ever seen that show, it's a pretty cool show. And they each went as uh, different characters from the show, and then they handed out cards with their respective um, uh, characters on them. So um, I ran into, or I saw Jay Witz. And this year he wasn't handing out uh, any sort of special card for him, but I kind of wanted his autograph. So one of the Raleigh League persons, the one that went as Madam Foster, um, gave me one of her cards, and I got it signed by Jay Witz. So this is my Jay Witz autograph. Um, Jay Witz is a really cool guy. Um, his girlfriend, Renee Collects, is also really, really nice. And it was really cool to, uh, to finally meet them. Um, I didn't really talk to Renee though. I kind of, I, sh I should have, I should have done that. Um, I apologize, Renee. I should have said hey to you. Um, but yeah, uh, got Jay Witz's autograph, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, I saved the wrapper that my, this deck box came in. Um, just because it's Japanese and kind of cool, and sometimes people like, um, random wrappers and stuff like that. Um, showed this in one of the earlier vids, but there's a pencil. And, um, so pretty much all that's left are all the cards. So, let's go ahead and start off by showing the cards from the Mutant Draft. Uh, the Mutant Draft was something that one I was really looking forward to. It was probably the side vent that I was looking forward to. Essentially what you do is you go and you buy random booster packs, whatever set you like. Um, they could be from the original base set up to black and white, legal, illegal, did not matter. Um, you bought, I think, six packs. You threw them pretty much in a box with um, a long, I think we had 16 people per group. Um, and then they were just kind of all sorted off randomly and passed back out. So you got a mixture of pretty much legal and illegal packs. Um, you ran the draft like you would a normal draft. So you opened one pack, you picked a card, you passed it along, and you kept doing that until the pack was empty and then you'd open it up again. Um, and then you built a deck like you would in a pre-release from the cards that you pulled, played against each other, and uh, tried to win, you know, obviously try to win your games to try and win some uh, some cards. So I'm going to show the, uh, the, the, the deck that I played with. Um, what makes a mutant draft so cool is that obviously... You have so many different sets, you have so many different Pokemon, you can't go, you know, if you have a Gengar, you can't really expect to find the Gastlys and the Haunter to go along with them. So, um, what you get to do is you evolve via type. So, I ran Electric and uh, Colorless, just so I could, you know, stick with the same type. Um, so basically, how this works is 
these three Pokemon are double color are double colorless are colorless basics. And yeah, I did pull the Cluffa, which is really cool. Um, these can evolve to any stage one Pokemon as long as it's the same type. So um, yeah, basically my Cleffa can evolve into a Persian, into a Dodrio, Girafrig can do the same, and so can Lillipup. That's how you play. Um, the goal or the strategy of my deck was pretty much spread damage. Um, well, spread damage and disruption. So I luckily pulled the Cleffa, which gave, which if I could pull it, um, would let me get off to some great starts with Eek. Um, I don't think I actually used any of the other basics, but, um, the Dodrio, I really like Triple Peck. I chose any three of my opponent's evolved Pokemon, and it does 30 damage to each. So that let me really take advantage of their bench. Persian, I used uh, for Sharpen Claws, flip three coins for each heads, discard a card from your opponent's hand without looking. So that could really, really hurt them. The Electric Pokemon in my deck, um, these were the basics that I ran. I also don't think I ever really attacked with any of them. Um, so those, th so these random basics, <laughs> random electric basics, evolved into these random stage ones, which I actually had two of the same stage one, which I thought was pretty cool. So my electrode, um, its poke body says any time it's damaged by an attack, I get to put one damage counter on each of my opponent's Pokemon. So that spreads out quite a bit of damage. Um, Really, the only other, um, just some general attacks. Uh, Swift was kind of nice because it wasn't affected by weakness, resistance, poke powers, poke bodies, or any other effects. So it always hit for 60, um, which was nice when I'm facing a Badon fan because they're resistant. They've got the poke body, which would usually reduce this attack down to 20, but it still did 60. Still couldn't take out a Don fan though. Um, this one is Jolteon. This uh, really wasn't a, uh, my, it's my only non-spread card, but I really liked, um, in fact, I don't, don't think I ever used this card. Um, it's Evolving Thunder. It says that if you just evolved Jolteon from, um, from Eevee, which I just realized because I don't have a, I didn't have an Eevee in my deck, I couldn't really use this. <laughs> it's a good thing I was, didn't have the opportunity to use it. Um, but it would do 10 of damage to my opponent's bench Pokemon. Oh, it did have a spread thing. Um, yeah, unfortunately I read it wrong, and, uh, yeah. I thought it was as long as it evolved. But I ended up not using this. This was my main attacker. Um, Energy Split does 30 to any, uh, to each of my opponent's Pokemon that has energy onto it. In a pre-release, you're pretty much attacking energy anywhere you can, just to get your energy attachment in for the turn. This took a great advantage of that. Um, it also pretty much allowed me to hit their bench too, so that was really nice. Um, and then Aqua Bolt did 60 damage plus 10 more for each water energy attached. So while this was a straight electric deck, I uh, actually did warrant run some water in it as well, just to make sure that I could uh, get those extra hits. So those were my Pokemon. Um, I also had some trainers and supporters. Potion, plus power, switch, super scoop up, energy switch, energy retrieval. And I pulled three supporters, Juniper, which is a really good card, so I'll still be using that, Cheerleader's Cheer, and Cyrus's Conspiracy, um, which would have been a really amazing card, you know, not that long ago. So, that was my deck. Um, I ended up losing only one game, which put me in second place, which got me two packs, which unfortunately um, didn't really get me too much. I, don't, I didn't pull anything really amazing from those packs. Um, you can actually see what I pulled from my packs in an earlier video, where I show, I believe it's entitled something like Nationals 2011 Mutant Draft Winnings, black and white packs. Um, but I'll go through some of the other cards that I pulled from the draft uh, that day, but didn't end up playing in my deck. A Reverse Manectric from Arceus, Reverse Parasect from Heart Gold Soul Silver, Reverse Paris from Heart Gold Soul Silver, Kyogre Hollow from Call of Legends, Dialga Hollow from Call of Legends, the bottom half of Ho Oh Legend, Butterfree FB from Supreme Victors, Beautifly Reverse from Diamond and Pearl, Bubble Coat Reverse from Legends Awakened, and a Sandshrew Reverse from Delta Species. So, um, as far as the draft goes, I think probably my biggest, um, Pulls were the bottom half of the legend, which actually made it halfway around the table, um, because you can't play legends in the mutant draft. Um, 
Well, actually, if you manage to pull two halves of the legend, you're more than welcome to use them. Um, but the chances of pulling two halves in a legend, because you have to pull both halves, are really slim to none. So people were choosing cards that they'd rather use in their decks rather than pick this card. So when it came by me, I grabbed it just because it was an ultra rare. Um, my only other really useful card that I was pretty excited about pulling... Where did it go? There it is. The Cleffa. This is the, one of the, pretty much the main starters for decks these days. Um, and it's, I think last time I saw it on, um, on eBay, it was like a 7 or $8 card. So um, I was pretty excited about that one. Uh, let's see. So those are my Mutant Draft winnings. Next, I will show um, all of the other rares, ultra rares, reverses, pretty much all the cool stuff that I got throughout the tournament. Um, a lot of this is from black and white packs that I opened. Um, I also went, I think there were four or five of us that went and split um, a triumphant booster box, so there's some stuff from there. Um, there's just quite a variety of stuff. So, Rev Twins, Rev Junk Arm, uh, this is all triumphant stuff, Nido Queen Rev, Venomoth, Porygon Z, Ponyta, Carvana, Diglett, Kangaskhan, Porygon 2, Haunter, Swinub, Illumise, Weepin' Bell, Venonat, Volbeat, Celebi Prime, Gengar Prime, top half of Palkia Dialga Legend, and, uh, oh, yeah, these are more too from that triumphant box. Agron, these are all hollows, Nidoking, Altaria, Drapion, Victory Bell, and now we go into other rares, reverses, um, hollows, etc. that I won just in random stuff from the uh, the, the main tournament. Sawsbuck, Revive, Reverse, Leopard, Timber, Reverse, Hitmontop, Hollow, Slowpoke, Reverse, Bennett, Lunatone, actually, I think these are more from my triumphant box because they're all kind of clumped together, Dugtrio and Golduck, Ellie Kid and Dragonite, Nido Queen, Grumpig, Sharpedo, Electivire, another Electivire, Ditto, Sock, oh, now we're back to non-triumphant things that I won in the tournament, uh, Sock, Rev Pignite, Rev Meganium, Rev Servine, Rev Timber, Lilligant, Patrat Rev, the Good Buffalo, uh, Samurott Hollow, Simisage Rev, Super Soup Up Rev, Reshiram Hollow, and Galvantula Rare. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the way Nationals went. I really had a lot of fun, got a lot of cool stuff, met a lot of cool new people, and um, I can't wait for next year. I'm definitely going back. Um, so really the only thing left to show is my deck. Um, is the deck I played for Nationals, which actually I'm going to show this in a different video because I haven't sorted it at all, and there's a couple of cards that I uh, actually changed around, so I'll change those back around. And um, yeah, we'll make this video a little bit shorter. So uh, stay tuned if you would like to see the deck that I ran.